<laughs> what up guys i didn't exactly know what to call this video because the developers are working faster than i can make videos about um i could there's like five features that i could show today but i'm gonna focus on one of them uh which is the layout engine in blender the the the, the engine that draws the buttons in the interface in the ui um, there are usually in Blender, um, the, it works with a multi-column system, so it has usually two columns, uh, sometimes even more, and that it's it, it manages to put a lot of buttons in in one, you know, in one panel, but it means that your panel has to be wider for you to actually read what's going on. Let's let's see an example here in two point um, seven. So the dimensions. Um, Panel, for example, where you set your render, um, your render size, and everything has um, a column for the resolution, for the frame range, aspect ratio, and reference. Some some of the columns make sense to be split like that, but this in this case it doesn't really make that much sense. Um, there are areas where, for example, the samplings for um, for cycles here. There is this column that is fairly filled in. Then there is a button that is all across. And there is this column that doesn't fill in all the way here. So there is like an empty, there's like a gap in there in the in the UI. If you change to branch branch path tracing, more buttons fill in that column, but then there's also like empty space again, then suddenly there are um, labels and uh, this part on the bottom is an add-on. But uh, um there are these it has this problem that one you have to have the um, the ui wide enough to read otherwise if you have it too small you don't get to read that much and there's empty gaps sometimes if if the area doesn't fill in properly and this happens all over the place look at this in geometry there's like an empty it's like a football field <laughs> worth of space left there um and this happens all over the place so the solution is to go with a simple column which solves many of these issues, especially the one about the empty space. There's basically no empty space um, because the each is per row. So when you run out of rows, you just the, the panel ends there. So the um, all this gain space by splitting things vertically, you can gain it horizontally. So look at the size of my viewport and look at when I fill it in with all uh, at, at I fill in all the text there, then it I gain so much more. And um, there are a few fixes that it needs to be done. For example, this setting in particular is on this side, but it will be aligned to the right. Um, sometimes when you split, there is like one character missing there that it's it, it's just align alignment things to fix. Um, let's see the samples one on cycles. This is the one that I was showing here. Like, let's go sampling. I'm gonna make my window always on top here. And let's see the sampling over here. And in this case, I have to have two columns because that's how I can get to read what is going on. But in the one single, the single column layout, I can just simply shrink much more and still get to read the settings. And it's also easier just to see um, which what setting does what. Um, it's so much, uh, it, you gain a lot of space. So this is pretty nice. Uh, more things to be fixed. The um, um, the presets right now here, they they use the whole row, but the idea is to put these presets on the header so you can have it up here. So for example, if you have dimensions, you can have uh, 4K, and then you could have it up here next to the the little widget to to drag. It could be up here. So you should select 4K, for example and you don't have to have the whole row, then you gain more space. Because um, presets are usually always on the top of the um, of the, the panel. So it makes sense, it's instead of having it up here, um, putting it on the same name. Because panel names are usually short enough, and even if you shrink it a lot, you still have room for some more buttons there. And presets, it means also that you can set presets while the panel is closed. So you could have the panel closed and then just from here, like click and change to 4K, 2K, whatever. Um, we could even add more this way. We can, since we have the, the system for presets much more available, much more clear, you could use it more often. 
Um, so this is, I think it's a great improvement. Um, some work since every panel has to have this feature. So every panel is, is defined in Python, in Blender, in the UI. So every panel has to define like it's a single layout. So if, if it's not done for that panel, it will just use the, the old layout, the, the regular one that you can make as many columns as you want. So add-ons in this case, if they don't set up that uh, setting, they can use the old um, system and it will just work. That won't change. And since uh, this has to go, we have to go through every panel and, and assign and make this new layout, it's very fast to do, but you have to go through every panel. So in the meantime, while doing that, we are also getting rid of some of the redundant panels. Um, this, this work actually is being done by uh, William and uh, Campbell. So <clears throat> one, for example, one panel that always bothered me is this panel, the transform locks. It's a whole panel in 2.7 that it's only for locking their location, rotation, and scale. When they actually belong here, you know, location, it locks this location. And the same for the other, the, the other settings. So um, it makes sense to have it all in one. In the new system, this is much more clear because then the panel goes away and then the um, log is part of the column right here. And we can shrink this all the way to a readable um, state. And here, since we had three, <laughs> that's a lot, three columns, then um, yeah, you, you have to have it like at least this wide. So we are having, we end up with like a half sized um, um, panel, which is pretty nice. Of course, there is a, little, a bit more scrolling, but um, that scrolling and with the shortcuts to, to collapse panels, then it's, it's not uh, that bad. And if you, it's easier just to collapse many panels, so you can just click and drag to, to click. And, uh, and you didn't know this feature. You can click and drag to open multiple panels or click drag down and then it will close them. Uh, or you can also, if you have multiple panels and you only want one, you can control click and it will click uh, close all the other panels. Um, having this simple layout also will allow it to have new features. For example, we could have a button that you could add a keyframe on the settings that can have keyframes. So for example, you can have, there is a there is a, already a mockup that it will have like the keyframe icon next to this setting. So it will only take like one more icon space where you could click on it and it will add a keyframe. Right now you have to right click and then insert single keyframe and it will add a keyframe. Um, it's nice yeah. you have to right click, but the thing is if you don't know that the setting can be keyed, then you have to right click to know. It's like, oh, okay, is, is the setting keyable? Okay, I have to right click and then know if I can key it or not. If you have it there all the time, it it's more gives it more visibility and more people will be um, will be wanting to animate. It's like it gives it more discoverability. Discoverability. Yeah. My English is broken. It's 9 p.m. And I wanted to make so many more videos, but the developers are working way too fast. Um, I think that that sums up what it's for this setting. It's not all over the place, and it's only done in places where it makes sense. For example, the um, relation, uh, this is another fix, that in 2.7 you have the relations and then you have a panel for relations extras. <laughs> so these two have been merged, now it's just relations. So um, also the, the, the properties that don't make any more sense, like the layers for example, they are not uh, here anymore. But you can shrink it way more right now. And if you have um, objects patented and everything, it will show up just as usual. Um, some panels, for example, the, um, uh, well, the display, I, I also like it because you can, since everything is one column, you can just click, drag down and enable everything at once. Click, drag. Texture space, by the way, this is something that uh, Clema added today as well. It wasn't there in 2.8. Um, while before you will have two columns, so you can't, you have to click down and then drag up. Um, I think that said in the panels where it doesn't make sense, like in this case, having one per row doesn't doesn't make sense. They they fit in one, and this is they will stay the same. Um, the the radio settings. 
Um, but that way is much more readable. You can see it on and on and off. This one says on, off. What does it mean that it's on and off? The duplies. Oh, the labels will have to be tweaked. I've seen some, for example, the sampling. Um, it says render samples, preview samples, square samples. And when you have branch pad trace, it has samples in every <laughs> uh, column uh, label. So maybe we can just uh, say samples at the beginning and then uh, group them. There is also the idea to have sub panels inside of the um, in inside of the, this layout system. I think there are some parts where that is already the case. Uh, I think in the movie clip editor, there's um, if if you load a, if you load a, a clip editor, you will find there's some um, settings that have I can't find it right here, but some of them had like a mini panels inside that is planned to become part of the actual Blender like the layout itself of, of Blender. So that will also benefit a lot of uh, add-ons that have too many buttons and they want to have um, smaller panels within. So this is this is a great thing is that the Blender improves and then all the add-ons can make use of this. And uh, I think that that's it. Just a quick one is that now the shader editor, the compositing editor and the texture editor, they are all reachable from this editor type. So you don't have to go to node editor and then change to shader and then node editor and then change to compositing, but you can just change it from here, which is much more clear. It gives also more discoverability. I need to learn how to say that word. That is it for today. I have so many other things that I wanted to show. There is the, there is a new panel in the, um, in the workbench engine for changing the materials, and uh, I, I, I will go through it tomorrow. There is also so many neat things going on. Plus, this is a quick one, is that um, many, if you have used 2.8 in the past few days, you've seen that the updates uh, for um, cycles and for EV were not really happening. You will move things and it wouldn't update. Now, some of those uh, have been tackled, some of these cases have been tackled, so you can actually move things around. And, um, and it should it should update um, more reliable EV as well. So this is pretty neat. And more work like this continues to happen every day. Improvements, um, uh, speed ups. Now the dependency graph. Some of the updates are on par with 2.7. So sh everything should start to get a bit more responsive and more uh, and faster as the team here and uh, everybody at the Blender Institute. We are like 20 people right now at the Blender studio and everybody is reporting bugs and keeping the developers busy. So stay tuned for more and I will see you again tomorrow. Yes, bye.